It was early July and a Sunday, and we were leaving Lake Garda to head north to the Dolomites. Traffic was heavy from the start. My GPS took us through Lake Garda's waterfront up north to Torboli, and then we began our ascent where we drove through some small but beautiful towns. It was single lane until we got to the highway, but we were surrounded by lush landscape, including vineyards, olive groves, and farmland. you'll find every few miles service stops. Some were auto grills, which we've become partial to, and if you aren't sure what those are, you need to see my video about the auto grill stations. I'll leave it in the description. And some were other kinds of stations, but we personally do think the auto grills are best. The Dolomites are a UNESCO World Heritage Site. They're known for their pale colored limestone jagged rock formations, as well as their long green valleys. We decided to break up our trip of the Dolomites into two sections because I thought that that made the most sense and was the smartest. Since a lot of these attractions we were going to be visiting for sunrise or at least very early. We would stay on the east side in Dobiaco because it was a beautiful small town and really centralized to Lago de Brias Tre Chimmi and Cincatore. And then we would move west to the town of Bolzano so that we could be closer to things on the western side, such as Alpe de Susi, several stunning towns, and then head into Austria to check out Innsbruck. Coming from Lake Garda, you are continuously just ascending, and you'll even see signs regarding the altitude. We did have to drive past Bolzano first, and we caught our first glimpses that were just stunning because it was just surrounded by vineyards and olive tree groves. You'll also find castles and high peaks, as well as some castle ruins throughout the Dolomites. One thing to keep in mind if you are driving is your speed. Google Maps was really great about letting me know about when a speed trap or camera was coming, but FYI, many times before a camera or a speed trap, there would be a huge drop in the speed limit. So you want to stay alert. I was actually surprised while driving how populated the Dolomites were. I wasn't expecting that. I thought that they would be far more remote and less populated, kind of like our experience in the Lofoten Islands in Norway. I think that the Dolomites are larger than most people realize, and that's why our plan for splitting them in half really worked out, and I highly recommend it if you have the time. What you'll notice in some of the signage in the Dolomites is that there are two names, even three names, at times given to one location. The Dolomites are bilingual, even trilingual in some places. Many villages and towns have both an Italian and German name given by the Austrians and sometimes a Ladin one too. This was the language spoken of the inhibiting people after the integration of the Roman Empire and it's said to basically be a vulgar Latin. Towns, roads, trails, and signs will vary between one, two, and three languages depending on where in the Dolomites you visit. Dobiaco is the Italian name for the town and Topla 
is the German, so the names couldn't have been more different. As you approach the town, you were greeted by the roundabout replica of Tre Chimi de Lavaretto, the most well-known mountain town of the Dolomites. We were staying at the boutique hotel Zimpati, and I was excited to finally get there and to start exploring. Hey everyone! So we've just left Lake Garda and we are now in Dobiaco or Toblock in the Dolomites and I have to say it's amazing. It took us a little bit to get here, probably about four hours. It is a Sunday and there was a bit of traffic um, but it is really incredible. Once you see those chalky limestone mountains it's really just it's nothing you've ever seen before it's quite extraordinary so i'm very excited to be here hopefully the weather keeps up with us um it does say that some rain is rolling in we see the clouds coming in very quickly so hopefully we'll have some nice weather and get some amazing footage we found that the weather in the dolomites can change very very quickly so you have to always be prepared we spent some time just walking around Dobiaco and taking it all in, but being a Sunday, many places were closed. To us, the town looked like Switzerland, felt like Austria, but yet we knew we were in Italy. It was just stunning. If you are familiar with your world history, prior to World War I, the land belonged to Austria, hence the German names. And then after World War I, when given to Italy, Mussolini wanted to Italianize the area, so everything was given a second name in Italian. In much of Europe, you hear so much about World War II, but here in the Dolomites, because Italy and Austria were once at war with one another, you'll learn much about the Great War, World War I. Here we go again, you think by now I know better Locked in my head, romanticizing forever Last love I found, these met the ground And all my roses died Swore I was through, but looking at you I think I changed my mind Yeah, it's Let's break our hearts for the fun of it. 
There was a small pedestrian area in the center of Dobiaco where you could find some shops, cafes, restaurants, and grocery stores. We ate at a restaurant there called Ariston Bar, Pizzeria, and Restaurant. We actually ate there twice. The food was really good and the service was incredible. We found that to be true about all places in the Dolomites. Their hospitality and service was outstanding. Our first night we walked to the opposite side of town and ate at Hans and here we definitely had our taste of Italy with the pizza and then Austria with the apple strudel. There aren't a ton of restaurants to choose from, but both of these were excellent. You just need to double check on Google regarding their times open and reservations are a good idea. The reason that we didn't eat dinner at the Zimpati was that they really just offered more of an aperitivo or simple bar food, like meat and cheese platters. And we were looking for more of a meal. So that's why we explored the restaurants in Dobiaco. Welcome to our hotel room in Dobiaco. We had a beautiful suite that was actually cheaper than the local Airbnbs. Inside the living space, there was a sofa, couch, a TV, a desk to work at, and a small refrigerator. The living area, as well as our bedroom, opened up to a little patio with a nice view of the mountains. The balcony doors were also helpful because we found out that there was no air conditioning. But it was okay because at night, the temperature went down to the 40s and the 50s, even in early July. So it was very comfortable, plus it was really refreshing, clean air. We had a spacious master bedroom that also came with robes and slippers, which I loved. There were two bathrooms, one with a nice walk-in shower, a heated drying rack, and a vanity. And then a smaller bathroom with a toilet, bidet, and a small sink. was included with our room. And as I said earlier, the service and the hospitality was just outstanding. The breakfast was really nice. And in addition to the nice setup, the staff always asked if we had wanted some eggs in any style, as well as they were constantly asking if we wanted some more hot beverages. Like I said, the service was just really incredible. link and the restaurants that we visited in the description. Stay tuned and make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss our first morning in the Dolomites when we visit Lago de Breas. See you next time! <laughs>